my dear brothers and sisters, do not owe anybody anything except love. The only thing you should owe somebody else, says St. Paul to the Romans and to all of us, is love. And he goes on then to explain that all the commandments of God are summed up in love love of neighbor. Last Sunday, we had the gospel where Jesus was asked a question about the greatest commandment. And he said the first commandment is love God. Above everything else, and the second one is love your neighbor. So Paul seems to be explaining to us today why Jesus answered that the love of neighbor is the summary of all the commandments. Commandments are ten. Some of them concern our love of God and the others, our love for our neighbor. But then in the gospel today, we hear Jesus' teaching that seems to be the opposite of love. Because Jesus says, if you come to me without first hating hate, Hating not just any neighbor at all, but he says, you must hate your father, your mother, your wife, your children, your brothers, your sisters, even yourself. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. Jesus, how can he be telling us to hate others when he said that the most important commandment is love? This is difficult to understand. But what he really means is that if you have to choose between love of God and the love of any other thing, including your father or mother or yourself, you have to choose the love of God first. Because he knows that once you love God really, you will love your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, and yourself. But if you think you love yourself, your brother, your sister, your father, your mother, your wife, your husband, but you don't love God, you will find out that what you call love is really not love. L-O-V-E. That word seems simple, but it is not simple. It is not just about how you feel. It is about your relationship with God and how that relationship with God influences your relationship with your neighbor. To love a person is to do everything you can to make that person the best of himself or herself. Do everything you can to make that person the best of himself or herself. Then you understand 
that sometimes some of the things we call love and some of the things we do in the name of love, they are not love. So that is what Jesus is teaching us. If you think you can love anybody or anything more than you love me who am your God, then you have not understood what it means to be a Christian. But if you place God first and love of him first, every other thing, you remember when he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and everything will follow. Now let me ask you, children, let somebody get a mobile microphone. Anybody who knows the answer should raise his hand or her hand and answer. When you are in a car, you see a car driving along the road, and the driver sees a gallop and avoids the gallop. Why does he do that? Or why does she do that? Yes? Because he loves that person. Because he loves that person. Which person? The person inside the car. The person inside the car. Because he loves that person, the person inside the car. Who has another reason? Why does a driver avoid a gallop? Yes, there is a hand elsewhere. Just anyone you look at. It's for him to love himself, the person, the car, and God. Speak loud so that we hear you. It's for him to love himself, the person, the car, and God. He wants to love himself. Do you really think that a person dodging gallop is thinking of God? Simple reason why a person doesn't want to enter gallop. Because he loves himself and doesn't want to die. Loves himself and doesn't want to die. Okay? That's why he's avoiding gallop. The last person here. I thought you there was okay. To avoid accidents. To avoid accidents. Thank you very much. Okay. Now if you ask the, old people, the older people here, your teachers and your parents, why they dodge gallop, they will tell you is that they don't want to spoil their car. That is a simple reason. Because there is something in the car called shock absorber. If you pass a gallop, the shock absorber will absorb the shock. But if you pass it with force, it may spoil the shock absorber. So, and the shock absorbers are very costly, and our roads are bad. If you continue to pass every gallop, you know that in this country, because the roads are bad, you will be changing your shock absorbers every week. Ask your parents who came with car and all the drivers. But then, drivers here, those who have cars, do you see how your children are reasoning that you are avoiding gallop in order to save yourself and the people in the car? Because you love them and love your life and love God. And you want to avoid accident. Let me ask other, uh, another question. Have you ever noticed that some people 
when trying to avoid a gallop, go and cause accident. Have you ever noticed that? Yes or no? Yes. Now, because you want to avoid an accident and you don't want to destroy your car, you avoid the gallop and in avoiding the gallop, you go and hit another car. Does it make sense? No. Now Jesus is like telling us, anybody who loves his shock absorber more than the passenger in the car is not worthy to own a car. Do you understand now? Anybody who loves his shock absorber more than the person he is carrying in the car, including himself, is not worthy to own a car. Before you own a car, or to show that you can own a car, you must be able to drive in such a way that you should be ready to destroy your shock absorber to save the life of the person in the car. Onweri heka ibe yempa ndo mado moto no nwoye ka shock absorber mpa mendo mado ka moto mpa if you are thinking of saving lives you don't mind what happens to your shock absorber because when you are alive you will buy another one so jesus is telling us if you put the love of god first then you will know how best to love your mother, to love your father, to love your brother, and to love your sister. Another example. This one, I want only those in the senior secondary school to answer. Microphone, go to the senior students. Why do people engage in expo? <laughs> Why do people engage in examination malpractice or expo? In order to pass their exams. We didn't hear you. In order to pass their exams. In order to pass their exams. Is it correct? A person who passes or who is said to have passed an exam. Why? Okay, let me ask another question. Why do we do exams? To test the knowledge of the students. To test the knowledge of the students. Is that correct? Okay. If exam is to test the knowledge of the student and somebody passes the exam through the expo, has that person shown that he knows the subject? This one, you don't need to ask any individual. Okay. Why do parents send their children to school? Everybody knows that one. To learn something good. Is it correct? Oh, God, yes. If I tell you, listen well. If I tell you now that you have 100% in mathematics, 100%, and you don't know the simple equations in mathematics, do you know mathematics? If 
I test your knowledge and you don't show me what you know. Some other person says you know what you don't know. Does that give you knowledge? Okay. A person who says you know what you don't know, does that person love you? A person who helps you to tell the whole world that you got A in mathematics, A in English, A in Igbo, A in chemistry, A in biology, A in government, A, and you don't know any of those things, does that person love you? Now, Jesus is telling us, if you think you love your child or your student or your friend more than you love the truth, then you are not a Christian. You don't even know what love means. I want to tell you, students, I'm begging you, whether he is or she is your principal or priest administrator or sister administrator or teacher or father or mother or examination officer or supervisor, anybody who loves the mark you get more than you, the knowledge you have does not love you. Anybody who loves the mark you get more than the knowledge you have does not love you. Because knowledge first. And if you are in class one, Two, three, the test of knowledge is meant to help you know, to see what you know and what you don't know so that you'll be taught and prepared better. And somebody is helping you to claim you know what you don't know. Now Jesus is telling us to put first things first and other things will follow. If somebody tells you to commit sin out of love and in committing that sin you destroy the person and destroy yourself. Jesus is telling us that is not love. So Paul is telling you yes, love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. But if you want to know what love means look at Jesus. Love is very difficult. It is not just giving the other person everything he or she needs. It means doing everything you can to make the person the best of himself or herself. The way God wants the person to be. So as we begin this new academic year, I want all the students and teachers and staff and principals and administrators to write it down in their diary and in their hearts that anybody who helps to declare to the world that a student knows what he or she does not know hates that student and wants to destroy him or her for life. Part of the problems we are suffering in Nigeria today start in our schools. A person scores 30 and she is given 50. A person knows enough to score 20 and the result comes out he has 75. 
The person seeks election. People say this man is bad. He cannot govern us. And they give him 20 votes. And they declare, the examiner says, 2 million votes. It is the same thing going on. The same thing. And this is what is destroying Nigeria. You give a person 10 million to do a project. He spends 1 million and says he spent 10. The same thing, examination malpractice, continuing, dishonesty, continuing. This is a very serious problem. Never you say you love somebody when you are not promoting the person's general well-being before God. Put God first and you will see that love sometimes will, you, will allow you to make the other person to suffer. Sometimes life is difficult and you allow the person growing up to experience difficulty in other As we thank God for this new year also, we know it is a difficult year already. On Mondays, many Mondays, we have not been able to go to school. And many other days also. And nobody knows how long this will last. We continue to pray that the situation in our country will become normal again. So that you will be able to go to school and learn, go to school and teach, go to school and work. So that we shall all become better citizens and better children of God. And while you go to school, remember there are so many people who don't have the opportunity. Thank God for your own opportunity. Use the opportunity well and pray for those who don't have that opportunity. I use this opportunity also to thank all of you for coming. Thank you for your efforts. Thank your teachers, members of staff. Thank your parents and guardians. And the members of the education secretariat and the workers there, I thank all of you. And I challenge you every year in the Catholic schools in Enugu State, we have competitions. This year, I want schools in Nsoka Diocese to collect all the best results in these competitions. Because you can make it. You have good schools and good teachers. Work hard so that you will make it. And let nobody give you result that is not your own. Let nobody declare that you know what you don't know because such a person does not love you. God first and other things will follow. Anybody who loves Max you get more than the knowledge you have does not love you and is not worthy to be a teacher. And anybody who loves his shock absorbers more than the car and the life of the people in the car does not, is not worthy to own a car. We thank God and I wish all of you a happy, productive, and successful academic year.